Replacing a damaged section of the I-5 Skagit River Bridge and reopening it to traffic was critical to the economy of Washington and a top priority for the Washington Department of Transportation. The bridge, a key link between Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia, is used by more than 70,000 vehicles each day. A section of the bridge collapsed into the Skagit River on May 23rd after overhead steel truss members were struck by a tractor trailer carrying an oversized load. WashDOT quickly replaced that section of the bridge with a temporary structure and engaged a design build team led by the Max J. Cuny Company to design and build a permanent replacement. Virtual Design and Construction, or VDC, proved critical in selecting the preferred method of constructing a permanent replacement span. Time was of the essence. WashDOT specified that the permanent repair of the bridge be completed within three months. Parsons Brinkerhoff, the designer on the CUNY design build team, used VDC to determine that the method initially considered for constructing the replacement, which would have involved fabricating it on a barge adjacent to the bridge and floating it into place, would not be feasible. There were several reasons for this, including the length of time the bridge would have been closed to traffic and the possibility that the water level of the Skagit River would be too low to allow the barge to be maneuvered into place. Instead, Parsons Brinkerhoff modeled an alternative that involved constructing the replacement span on temporary support piers slightly to the west of the bridge. This method allowed the design build team to plan a faster and less risky construction sequence, sliding the temporary acro bridge structure out and sliding the permanent span into place during an intense 19-hour operation that met WashDOT's goal of minimal closure time of this critical transportation corridor. During the final design phase, the VDC model was enhanced to include updated field survey data, river bathymetry survey data, existing bridge LIDAR data, proposed design prefabrication models, and temporary beams and other sources, many with unique coordinate systems. The model was used to determine and validate the clearance of the new span between structural elements of the existing piers. The model also allowed construction staff to rehearse the sliding sequence of the temporary and permanent spans. With the replacement span in place, the bridge was reopened to traffic on September 15, just three months from the award of the design-build contract to the CUNY team. The use of virtual design and construction enabled the project team to model and evaluate a variety of scenarios and ultimately choose a design and construction method that ensured a successful project.